Thank you very much, Brother Ronald. And we pray that Sister Ruth will feel better and get well very quickly. And uh, this morning, I did mention Sister Daphne. Uh, Daphne Mears, you remember Sister Daphne. She sits somewhere in the middle of the congregation. She was hospitalized yesterday. And uh, she's just about 80, 84, 85. And we want to pray and trust God for her, as well as her sister, Sister Vashti Weeks, that also sits somewhere around there. We haven't seen her for a couple of weeks well. And we want to believe God that their bodies will be restored to health in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And there may be others who we haven't been seeing that may be sick. But we want to believe and pray God today that his healing virtue will flow through them. Amen. And to them. Would we pray? Can we pray together for them? Heavenly Father, we thank you because healing is your children's bread. So says you in your word. And it is you, the healer of all our sicknesses and diseases. He says, I am the Lord that heals. Lord, and today our eyes are upon you. Our hearts are trusting you. And we lift up our voices to you. You said, when we call upon your name, we will be delivered. We will not be disappointed. And so we affirm our faith in you and your word. On behalf of our, our sisters and those of our brethren who are sick right now, we ask that you will manifest your presence, manifest your healing in the name of Jesus from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet and the tip of their toes. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the afflictions of the enemy. We rebuke the works of the devil right now. And we claim healing in their bodies. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood upon them wherever they are. As we resist every ancestral spirits and generational curses. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you today, Father, for victory. In Jesus' name. Would you say amen with me? Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Today, we want to talk a little bit from the Word of God. It's something we have been looking at over the past few weeks. In the person of Elder Rudy Federicks. Amen. You remember what he's been talking about? Yes, he's been talking about the supernatural. Amen, you remember? Some of us took notes, and some of us uh, took mental notes, and so on. But today, I want to build a little bit on that supernatural, and look at it from a different angle, that we can be able to see that our entire life as children of God, as people of God, it must be lived in the supernatural. As a matter of fact, oh, we are in the supernatural. Once you become a Christian, you're moving out of the natural and into the supernatural. That's right. We move out of that which is normal and we are moving into the supernatural of God. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things become new. One of the new things is that your life is no longer lived in yourself and in your own strength and in our own minds and, and our own imaginations and strategies. We now depend upon the one who is supernatural in the heavens and the earth and on the earth. His name is Jesus. Amen. The Bible says he is the name above every other name. That at his name every knee should bow. Everything confess that he is Lord. Because he is Lord, we, are, we can share in the supernatural of his very person and nature. Amen. The Bible says all, all power belongs to Jesus, isn't it? All power is given to him. We are, we are singing a song, tried to sing a song this morning here. How many of you remember? Well, I'm, I'm talking to a different crowd, I, I know. But tell me, you remember the song that used to say, All power belongs to Jesus? <laughs> amen, amen. All power belongs to Him. Now that I am a child of God, that power belongs to me. Hey, you're a child of God, amen. 
and you possess that power that is in Jesus. It's not your power, it's his power. But his power has come to live inside of us. And he uses us as he wills, by his power. That's what the word of God says. His power enables us to be what he wants us to be. To be a child of God, the Bible says we need power. We need the authority of Jesus. First, uh, sorry, John chapter 1 and verse 12. You remember what it says? But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. We couldn't become children of God by ourselves and in our own strength. We were weak and powerless. As a matter of fact, we were slaves. We were under control by sin and by Satan and by our own sinful nature. We were slaves. That song that is sung today is a beautiful song. I'm no longer a slave. Hallelujah. I am the child of God. No longer under control by the power of something else that is outside of God. We are now controlled by God's power. Amen. We are children of God. We have power. Yes, you receive power to be the sons of God. Did you hear me? The supernatural power of God is in our lives to be his children. But you shall receive power to be sons of God. Today, many of us are trying in ourselves to be sons of God. But the Bible says we are children of God. I am a child of God. You have come to put your faith in Jesus. You are a child of God. Come on, you're hearing me. Nobody would even say amen. You, you, are you hearing what I'm... The Word of God tells us we are children of God. And that's the highest, highest form of relationship anyone can have with God. To be called a child of God. Somebody, would you say, I'm a child of God? Amen. So today, I want, like I said, we want to build a little bit on what our brother spoke to us. And he gave us a, a definition of the supernatural. And one of the things he said is that the supernatural indicates that, they, that there is, it's something speaks of a manifestation or event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or laws of nature. It's above and it's beyond thing, uh, uh, the nature, beyond things that we see. And so we're talking about that which is from God. So what I want to do is today is to first of all contrast our nature with God's nature. So we can see that we need the supernatural. What does the Bible say about God? That the nature of God is supernatural. How? Because He is the creator of the universe. He created all things. How did He create it? He didn't, the, the Bible tells us He didn't have um, material things and he, and he created this like we do. We, we have to get material to build or to create, we've got to get things. The Bible says, he spoke the worlds into being. He says, let this happen, and it happened. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. If you would open your Bible with me, or can we just put it up on the, uh, the screen? Uh, the, those of us in the room, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 tells us, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty and high. This is, relates to Jesus. And it relates to his preservation of uh, the creation and things around us. But in chapter 11, same Hebrews, chapter 11 verse 2 tells us something else about how the worlds came into being. We've got to have a faith that says God is, and that he, he does things by his word. What does it say? Would you help us? 11 and verse, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 1, did I tell you verse 2? Let's go to verse 1. And now faith, it says, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
And uh, verse 2 tells us what? For by, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How, the word, how did it come into being? By the word of God. God spoke it by the word of God. So that the things which we see and the things which we handle were not made of things which appear. The things around us, everything you see, God spoke by the power of his word. And it's also kept by the power of his word. So God is the creator of all things. We also see from the Bible that God is spirit. In other words, he's invisible. He's incorporeal. The Bible also tells us that God is infinite. The reference for God is spirit is down there in, in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 24. that says God is spirit. But God is infinite. In other words, he's limitless. He's endless. In space and in size. God is bigger than anything. God is, is outside of our imagination. He's infinite. The infinite God. In, in, the, in theology, they would say that he is transcendent. In other words, he's higher and he's bigger than the, than the universe. Or he's, and he's eminent. So God is both transcendent above everything else. He's higher, but yet he's with us. Despite the bigness of God, God is with his creation, with people. He is transcendent but yet imminent among us. And we need to recognize that and understand that about our God who is supernatural. If we also discover that God is eternal. He has no beginning. He has no ending. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I'm just letting you see that it's God we're talking about and why we need His supernatural. It's because of who He is. The Bible tells us also that God is omnipresent. Means that He is everywhere. There's nowhere that God isn't. He's everywhere. The only place he isn't is where he doesn't want to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is present, omnipresent. He sees you. Psalm, uh, the book of Psalms tells us that. Or you can read the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 24 to 28. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. Omnipotent, we heard from our brother uh, Rudy, means that God can do anything. With God, all things are, all things are, all things are possible. He's omniscient, means he has all knowledge. Now these words indicate that God is supernatural. And he's naturally supernatural. God is supernatural and naturally he's supernatural. There's, there's nothing that he it will be too hard for him to do. Nothing. Nothing at all. By contrast, mankind. The Bible tells us that God created us. He is the creator. We are the creation. We need to understand that. That we don't possess what God has. He shares with us and he invites us and enables us to do things. But we need to remember that we do not possess God's power. We do not possess his, um, his omnipotent. Om, omni, we are not omnipresent. We are limited. Amen. We are limited in the things we do. Sometimes it, but, it baffles us when people operate as if they can command God. We can tell God what to do. We can bring him into our hands and, and make him do what we want him to do. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what the Word of God teaches. The Word of God teaches that we need to hear Him. We got to obey Him. We have to please Him in everything we do. In the life that we live. And we've got to have faith in Him. We've got to trust Him when we need something. Yeah, sometimes we think, it's my prayer that does it. If I pray hard enough, if I bend His hands a little bit, if I force him with, with my prayer, then I will get the answers that I need. My brothers and sisters, I got some news to you. That's not true. It's not so. We better have faith and depend on the living God and to re reverence his name and respect his power and learn to trust him rather than trying to force him to do what we want. You may get what you want, 
but you end up the wrong way. For there is a way that seems right unto a man, the Bible says, but it's a way that leads to destruction, the way that leads away from God. But in God's uh, economy, we've got to learn to trust Him and depend upon Him. So man, we need to recognize that we, we need Him. Amen. Now when God created us, the Bible tells us that He made us in His own image and in His own likeness. Amen. And so, man has become the bearer of God's image and likeness. But you and I know that something has happened that has, that has completely distorted what God wants. No, we don't uh, operate like God. The Bible says, just as God is three in one, so he made us three. Tripartite, the theologians will say. In other words, we are body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And the, the, what makes us really valuable in God's sight is our spirit. It says when God formed man in the ground, out of the, the, the dust of the ground, isn't it? And it says after he breathed into man, and man became a living soul. You know, that, the, the, that breath that, the, that he breathed into us is what put the spirit his spirit in us. We are created body and soul, but then he breathed into us. No, that's the word, that's the meaning of the word spirit. Breath. Ha! Ha! Isn't it? And so God breathed into you and I, and we became living. So the most important part in our being as humans is our spirit. As a matter of fact, there are some persons who say, and, and we believe that too, that man is a spirit. He has a soul, but he lives in a body. Man is spirit. Man is spirit. He has a soul and lives. That's the way God created us. Your spirit is that aspect of the supernatural of God that is in us. The way we get to know God is not through our bodies and not through our, our soul, our minds, our intellect. We come to know him by our spirit. He reveals himself to us. But then when our forefather... Adam and our four, our four parents sinned against God. The Bible tells us something happened on the inside. That spirit died. In other words, the light went out. In other words, the glory of God that enabled them to be in the image of God and the likeness of God went away. And that image has been passed down to us. We were born with spirits that are dead, without the supernatural enablement of God to be what he wants us to be. You read the book of Genesis and the early chapters 1 to 3 and see that the Adam had intellect like God. He was able to name all the animals. He was able to do the things that God wanted him to do. And he was living in a life that was free from guilt and condemnation. But the moment... His spirit died. His spirit became uh, 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 darkened with sin. It says that he, saw, he recognized that he was naked. They were naked. The glory had gone. Sin had taken over. And today, it's no different for, for, for us because we are his descendants. The Bible says, but by, because of one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Therefore, uh, death is passed to all men, for all have sinned. You and I know that that death isn't merely physical death. It's saying that we are separate from the life of God, from the, the very presence of God in us. So, before Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, they were controlled by the Spirit. They were able to express the things of God. But now that sin came in, their spirits are dead. Their soul and their bodies took over. The mind and the body. The soul is made up of, the, of our minds, our emotions, our wills. And that it was without God. No wonder the world degenerated. No wonder that we also uh, d dive deeper into sin and darkness. Listen, we are saved today because of the grace of God. Because of the love of God. Because of the mercy of God. And sometimes we don't appreciate the salvation that God has brought into our lives. We take it for granted. You know, without Christ, some of us would have been in, in, a, in a horrible state than we are right now. 
You look at some of the junkies on the street and you said, I will never be like that. That would never happen to me. I'm telling you, if we, you continued in your life without God, without his power and enablement, we would have ended up the same place. We would have been doing worse than they're doing. I would never kill. I will never murder anybody. I will never do this or that. Let me tell you, the Bible says the heart of man after the sin is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? How does God see us today without his presence, without his life and his supernatural power? The Bible says there is no one who does good. Not one. None. We may be good to each other. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 right through the 13. There is none who is righteous. There is none that doeth good. No one seeks after God, he says. Everybody has turned their way. They're going in darkness. But the Bible tells us that despite all of that, despite the distortion of his nature in us and his image in us, I didn't say his nature and his image departed. I said it's in us, but it's no more in connection with God. No more in relationship. And so the Bible calls it death. We are dead. We are spiritually dead. And this death leads to physical death and also leads to eternal death. But the mercies of God is good to us. The, the, the grace of God has been poured out upon us. Listen, you're not hearing me. The salvation of God is not because there was something good in your life and my life or someone else's life, my parents, the pastor, or because somebody did good to me or because I desired it. No, the Bible says it's all God from starting to finish. Salvation is of the Lord. Hear what it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. It says, for by grace... Are you saved, isn't it? Brethren, by grace are you saved through faith. Grace, you know what grace means? Grace means that it's all God. It's by his favor. It's a favor that we do not deserve, that we do not merit. That's why we are standing here today. I'm trying to say to you, my dear brother and sister, that we've got to learn to depend upon the grace of God if we're going to be what God wants us to be. And that grace ex is expressed in supernatural uh, expression. By the, the Bible says it enables us to be what God wants us to be. No believer can live the life that God wants us to live by ourselves. We've got to recognize it's the grace of God. And the mercies of God. He says in the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 5. It's 2 or 3 or 3, 5. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercies, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? Yes, it's what he has done. We couldn't do it ourselves. We were very weak. We were powerless. But thank God he did it. Thank God I'm saved. Amen. Thank God I have life. He has restored us back to himself. This is why Jesus came into the world. So that the, re the restoration to the image of God will become ours one more time. Thank God we are conforming to his image. That's what God is doing today. What's the purpose of a believer? What's the purpose of, of a Christian? It's so that we may be confirmed to the image of Jesus. That image that was lost in the garden, is now restored to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, we can now be what God wants us to be. We are born again. We are saved. Yeah, we have been renewed and washed in the blood of Jesus so we can soar in the supernatural of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what the Word of God says. The Bible, Lord Jesus himself says, without me, you can do um, that's in the book of uh, John chapter 15. And is it verse 3 or 4? Without me, without me, nothing. You know, it doesn't mean that um, it means you can't uh, act and you can't talk and you can't. That's not what it means. What it means, we can do nothing that will honor God, nothing that will please Him, not, no, no righteousness will come forth from our lives. Nothing that is what God requires of us, we can do in ourselves. Without me, he says, you can do nothing. And then it also says in the book of Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 13. What does it say? I can do, all, come you're going to help me. I can do all, how? 
through Christ. All things that is honorable, all things that he wants us to do, including the expression of supernatural. It's there. The Bible says God has uh, given us that, uh, know that you're saved. He's given us his ability to do all that he wants us to do. And what are the things God wants us to do? He wants us to live holy. Holiness is the nature of God that he transfers to us and enables us to express it. The righteousness of God in our lives come from him. Nobody can be righteous in themselves. The people of Israel thought that they could have done it by keeping the law, by obeying the commandments. But we've got to recognize it's not what we do. It's what Jesus did for us on the cross. There's no righteousness or holiness without the atonement of Jesus, without his death on Calvary. That's the work of God. It's the supernatural work of the Lord. The Bible tells us it's by God's power that he was raised from the dead so we can be justified, so our sins can be forgiven, so that we can have this life in us, depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day to be what God wants us to be, we've got to depend on him. I asked the congregation this morning, how would you describe, if somebody were to ask you to describe a believer or a Christian, how would you describe them? What definition would you give to a believer? Is it somebody who gets baptized in water? Is it somebody who merely prays the sinner prayer? Is it somebody who comes to church often and that happens? Is it somebody who got baptized as an infant? Or is somebody who is living morally upright? How do you describe a Christian? I want to tell you something. There's, there's none of those that were mentioned. The whole Bible describes a believer. A believer is one in whom Christ lives. One who is possessed by the power and the life of Jesus. You have Jesus living inside of you. Then we're telling you something. That your life is now pleasing to God. In Him. He, we are accepted in Him. We are in Him. As a believer, when Jesus lives in us, we are truly acceptable to God. Again, in the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. What does it say? Anybody remembers? It says, I have been crucified. Come on, you don't hear me. I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Where is he living? Up in heaven. He's living somewhere in the church. Sometimes it pains, you know, brother, when we come to church and we got to say, welcome to Jesus and welcome to the presence of God and welcome to the whole. We don't, you know, we, we need to be living a life of welcome all the time. He's, he's resident in our lives. And he must be president. He says, Christ lives in me. This is why the life of the Christian is a supernatural life. Because Christ lives in me. And the life I now live. I live by trusting him. Amen. So I, I became alive because he lives in me. And restored to God and relationship and the power of his presence in me. But also to live each day. To live in holiness. To live in righteousness. To live in purity. To live in obedience to God. I also depend on him. I live by faith in the Son of God. The supernatural of God, my brother, my sister, depends upon our faith in him. The faith in him. It's not your working and my working. It's what he is doing in our lives. I quote it from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. It says there that work out your salvation. Would you help me put it board? Work out your salvation how? With fear and trembling. What does that mean? You want to help me please on, this, on the overhead so we can have a look at it? It says... Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13 and 14, I think it is. What does that mean? Sometimes we think, you know, sister B, is that we've got to strategize and plan how we are going to live this Christian life. That was good. It's good to plan and to think about how you're going to approach a situation. Except that we don't approach our difficulties and our our troubles and our warfares in ourselves, we are going to be defeated. We are, we'll, 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 lost, we'll lose 
all that we have. It tells us, it's not there yet. I'm trying to point something out to us. Will you help me? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13 or 12 to 14. And it says there, work out your salvation. The only reason you can work out your salvation with fear and trembling is because of what it says in verse 13. Verse 13, will you go to verse 13 for me, please? For it is God who is at work, where? The only reason, you can, when it says work out, it doesn't mean plan out. What it means is that you bring out, you show out, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, you're not hearing me. You show out because it is God who is showing up inside of you and inside of me. He is working on the inside so I can work on the outside. We sing it all the time. Jesus on the inside. Working on the outside. The only reason we can ever live the life that God wants us to live is because God is at work in us. Because the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Because the power of Jesus is at work. The resurrection power of Jesus is at work. So we need to work out. Amen. I like to dwell on this whole matter of the works of the believer. And it must resemble that of Jesus, the works of Christ. Because he said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Sometimes we think it's this big, explosive uh, power that uh, we're going to raise the dead and, and heal the sick. No, all that is true. When we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they shall, what? Cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will speak with new songs. Signs will follow the believers because we are in Christ. But you know, I believe that the, the works that God is talking about there is the works that comes purely by His Spirit and by His power in us. I like what it says in the book of Matthew chapter 5. And verse 16, everybody knows that. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That they may see your good works. How can they see? You've got to let something shine out of you. Sometimes we think that this work, that they may see your good works relates to our benevolence. And that may be so. It relates to our goodness in our, uh, in our homes, in our families, and so on. And that is true. We've got to live lives that are expressive of the love of God and expressive of the goodness of God and, and the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ to our brothers and our sisters. It says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. But I think that when it talks about good works, it's a supernatural expression that comes through Jesus Christ. Hello, are you hearing me? Here what the Bible tells us in the book of John. This is the one we just uh, quoted from. And it says that he was walking and he met a man by the pool. The man by the pool and uh, this man was invalid. In other words, he couldn't move. And Jesus says, what, what's wrong with you? What do you want? He says, you know, um, I, I've been here for over 38 years. Well, the scripture says he was there. And I just can't get into the pool because... By the time this pool is stirred up, that other people jump into the pool and the pool, and um, I, I'm left out. I don't, can't get healed. And the Lord Jesus looked at him and said to him, get up, take up your bed and go home. And there's what the word of God says. The moment Jesus said that, his feet became strengthened and he got up. That was a miracle, isn't it? And so the, the authorities, the religious authorities, the Bible says persecuted Jesus because he did that on the Sabbath. So Jesus interacted with them and, and communicated with them. And this is what it says there in the Bible. Jesus thought, he says, greater things than these you will see because I'm going to the Father. Greater things than these you will experience because I'm going to the Father. Greater works than these shall you do because I am going to the... What is he talking about? That demonstrative supernatural aspect of his ministry. And that is what he's called us to do. When he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Because that's a supernatural expression. How do I know this? Because it also says in the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 38. 
chapter 10, the book of Acts chapter 10, that how God anointed Jesus Praise the Lord. Would you help me with that other verse, please? Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Maybe we, we can read from verse 37. Verse 36 says, You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through the Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John, that John preached. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Notice that. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. And what happened? How and how he went around doing what? He went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. In other words, the good and the healing were demonstrative of God's supernatural power. And not only are we uh, to live out of holiness and righteousness and the, the nature of God and the fruit of the Spirit by depending on Him, but God says we can be supernatural in our, in our relationships with those who have needs. Because we do good. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works. Those good works are surely works of power, works of supernatural. Today, we need to have that kind of life, isn't it? you agree with me? We need to demonstrate when our, our, our society, our communities, our country, you listen every day on the news, and you're saying, what is happening in our world? This, didn't happen to, this is not the first time it has happened. It has been happening all the time. Oh, my God. Darkness seems to be covering the earth. But thank God, the light is shining. Amen. The light of God is shining through you and is shining through me. Am I preaching a little too long? All right. Thank you. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut short this. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, are, I've, lo I've lost some of you. I, I think I've lost some of you. But um, <laughs> my message to you today is that God wants you to live in the supernatural every day by faith in Him. Amen. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that supernatural I'm saying is not just to live, well, we need the supernatural to live holy, to live righteous, to live good. But we also need the holy, uh, the supernatural to be demonstrative of the of the power that God wants us to have. Two things, our character and our expression in Jesus Christ. Demonstrative of power. I want to close, <laughs> hallelujah, by talking to you about how we can enter into that supernatural. And uh, my simple word is, from the Bible, it is when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, that God manifests His power through us. Hey, what it says in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Everybody knows it. I know you, you didn't say amen to that, but it's in the Word. What does it say? But you shall receive when the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. That verse is in the context of when He spoke to them that says here, you will receive power. Stay in Jerusalem. You are going to receive power. Don't leave until you receive power. For just as John says, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. There are some of us who have come to one level and one stage of the supernatural. To live out as sons of God. To live a correct life. A holy life and a pure life. But many of us have not attained to that aspect of his demonstrative supernatural power. The Bible says it comes when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Is it possible for us to have the Holy Spirit in us and not be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, it is. Let me tell you. Jesus himself. Let's begin by looking at him. He was born of the Holy Spirit. You agree with that, isn't it? Yes, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. 
And he, the Holy Spirit enabled Mary to bring him forth. His life began with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was with him every day of his life. Don't worry with those fancy things that people say about Jesus. That you know, he used to, they, uh, they used to um, make uh, mud um, birds and, and uh, so on. And, and he used to bring them to life and all that. That's not true. That's not in the Bible. That's not true. But yet... Jesus was enabled day by day by the Holy Spirit to live a life that was honoring to the Father. We became, he became known to the people at age 30. You agree with that? Age 30. How did, he get, how did they get to know him? He lived a life as the Son of God by the Holy Spirit, but nobody recognized him. Nobody didn't even know. His mother had an inkling that this, this child of mine, he's somebody different. Is somebody special. She herself wasn't sure. Even John the Baptist, when he got baptized, heard the voice. Later on he says, are you the one to come? The, the, the Bible says he was not attractive to anyone. They didn't even desire him. But look, it says at age 30, he went to John the Baptist to be baptized. And it tells us that when he was baptized by John... That the heavens open. And John says, I saw the Holy Spirit like a dove coming to rest on him. And he must be the one. He, because the one who sent me to preach told me, the one on whom you see the Holy Spirit coming upon, he is the Messiah. He is the one who will baptize others with the Holy Spirit. Just imagine, the person who is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit was being baptized with water. No wonder John said to him, I need you to baptize me. Yeah, because it was a very significant moment in the life of Jesus and in his walk with God. He needed the, the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to live. It says, after his temptation in the, in the wilderness, he came back to the Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. He was baptized. He was uh, by the Holy Spirit. And now he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. And brothers and sisters, this is what God wants for our lives as well. Because he says that this same Jesus who was baptized by water, baptized by the Holy Spirit, will baptize you and I in the Holy Spirit. This is where we need, we need more people who are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, worship team, for that lovely song that we sang this morning. Amen. What does it say? I'm going to dance and pray. You remember the song? It doesn't matter what comes my way. The Holy One lives inside us. His name is Jesus. Oh, and there's something else down there that I, I like that it says. I'm born a winner. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I rejoice in Him. No, it's a, I'm more than a conqueror. Something like that, isn't it? All this is true. <coughs> When we begin to experience the baptism and the whole of the Holy Spirit, we become effective lives, demonstrative of the, the power and the life of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to tell you something. I believe God is saying this to you too, today. If you will receive it, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Continually filled with the Holy Ghost. Live every day in Him. If you're not baptized yet, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you've been baptized some time ago, but life has become boring and dull to you, it is because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to live through you, to be what God wants you to be. You need to come back to the altar. You need to come back to the place of the fire of God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that He will fill you with his demonstrative supernatural power to be and to live and to, uh, to express him in our day and in our time, in our era. You need a refreshing from the Lord. Oh, that the times of refreshing will come on you. That the flow of the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. That out of your belly, like our sister says, will flow. That's what he meant by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It will flow out of you. Amen. And take over out of your belly. Rivers will flow. Not just wells, but rivers will flow out of you. That's the will of God. That's what God wants for us. Amen. 
Amen. Father, we thank you. I just bless your name this morning. Lord, you see each person that is sitting in, our, in your presence. You know right where we are and the need that we have in our lives for the Holy Spirit. Oh, so often we've been walking defeated lives. So often we've been walking lives that are not honoring to you. God, we look to you today for the manifestation of your grace. Hallelujah. We pray that the manifestation of your Holy Spirit will come upon our lives. Baptize us afresh. We pray in the name of Jesus, cause us to walk in holiness, cause us to walk in purity, cause us to walk in righteousness, but also cause us, Lord, to have the power that heals and that delivers and that bring light. It's not our power, it is your power. But Lord, we pray that you will fulfill the promise to work through us, for you said these signs will follow them that believe. We pray in the name of Jesus that signs will follow us wherever we go. We will walk in the way that you want us to walk. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we pray you take over our lives today. Have your way in the name of the Lord Jesus. Teach us to walk in the supernatural of God. Not just salvation, but also the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of your Holy Spirit and the ministry of your Holy Ghost. Help us to attain to that which you have ordained for our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus like the Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesians that you will grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We pray that we'll surely have a revelation of the knowledge and the wisdom that you're working today in our world. Lord, you're doing it all over the world. We pray you'll do it for us here in Guyana. We pray you'll do it for us here in the church at South Road in the name of Jesus. We will not live just ordinary lives hoping and waiting, but we will experience you daily in our walk in the supernatural that you've given to us. Help us acknowledge uh, your presence in us first of all. Help us acknowledge that you've gr graced us, uh, that your mercy is upon our lives, that your enablement is upon our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shana Moria Baba Sanda. Oh, Yakara Sanda. Would somebody pray? Come on, in the name of Jesus. I know this is that afternoon and it's, it's, uh, it's a time past your rest hour, and some people want to rest, but with some, with, would you just reach out to the Holy Ghost? In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your word come alive. Let your word come alive. Let faith come alive. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we will not be satisfied. Lord, we will not be satisfied with just the status quo. We will not be satisfied with the ordinary. Lord, we are not going to be satisfied with just coming to church, uh, having a, real, a service, having a, a time with you and go back home the same way and come back the same way. Lord, you want us to have a demonstration of your presence in our lives, to interact with you, to encounter you in your power. We pray that you will cause us to, to have faith in you, to believe you, Lord, so that we can be and we can live and we can experience your glory and we can experience your presence and your power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Lord, we drive out the spirits of unbelief out of our lives. We command it to leave us right now. In the name of Jesus, to leave, to go out, that faith will come alive in us, your people, in the name of Jesus, to believe you. You said in your word to have faith in God, to believe that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you to know that you are God hallelujah and you keep your word in Jesus name Lord we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise some of you can speak in tongues some of you got a spirit come that's the way you express the supernatural of God first and foremost in speaking in tongues why are you waiting or being quiet come on let's just express what God has given to you already Yes, some of you are driving demons away when you speak in other tongues. Some of you are interceding according to the will of God when you speak in other tongues. 
We release a new, fresh, uh, Lord, wind upon your people. In the name of Jesus, we release ourselves, Lord, that uh, your rivers will flow through us in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Come on with somebody in to see it and pray with me. Come on, you can praise the Lord. Maybe you haven't spoken in tongues for a long time. This is your time. Come and let the revival of the Holy Ghost come on your life. Lord, turn things around. Turn things around in our lives. In the name of Jesus, no longer the same. By your power, by your power. Your power in the name of Jesus. Akaboruyanda, lamokodo kota kasa lamosakarianda kamokonda, lamokona moshanda kamomo romo mo, mororo mokonda kamasiande. In the name of Jesus, we will not give in to the works of darkness and the work of the devil. In the name of the Lord, because you're filling us with your Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, akarabo, Lord, fill us with your period Spirit right now. Fill us, your people, in Jesus' name. We give you glory. Come, brethren, we need to pray. We, there's a sense there's need to, for prayer. A time of God's people to pray in the Holy Ghost. To pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh God, straighten things out. Lord, the things that have gone crooked, straighten them out, we pray in the name of Jesus. The things that are, 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 are defying your word, in the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus that they be de defeated right now and come under our feet in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. No word that the enemy has spoken, no weapon that is formed will prosper. No word that will succeed that is coming from darkness over our lives. Today we resist it. Yes, Lord, the stupid devils have brought over the church. We command it to leave right now. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood of Jesus against you. No longer are we going to give in to your tricks and to your schemes. In Jesus' name, our eyes are open. God has given given us authority. He has given us a power. He has given us what it takes. He has to deal with the kingdom of darkness. Oh, bring us alive again. Oh, Lord, bring us alive and connect with you. In the name of Jesus, help us encounter you. Yes, Lord, the values that we have neglected, the values of your presence and of your Holy Spirit. And the, yes, Lord Jesus, the gift of your spirit, in the fruit of your spirit. We pray that it be restored in the name of Jesus. We pray that it will come ours one more time. The joy of walking with you on a daily basis. You said the word, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, so often we walk in anxiety. We walk in discouragement. But today we resist all of that. We receive of your Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, cause your church to rise again. Not to be just in a corner. In the name of the Lord, to be known in this nation. Cause this church to be known in the nation. You give us a mandate to be a model to the nation. Oh Lord, we are far from where it ought to be. But we pray today you cause us to rise. We have been so content with what the little we have received. But God, we want to have more of you. Yes, in the name of Jesus, to represent you. Lord, to glorify you to be a model to the nation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, will somebody pray? Will you believe the Lord today? Lord, defy your own feelings right now. And listen, you pray in the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized with the Spirit. You need to stand up and let's believe God with you to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Believe the Holy Ghost to come upon you just as it was in the days of the Bible. The days 
of the New Testament. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will give you the Holy Ghost if you will ask Him. He will give you, yes, the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you will believe Him. If you're not, you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, stand up and let's believe God with you. That many of us can see what's happening before you. But God is seeing this is the hour. Come on, this is the time for you to believe Him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Yeah, he's changing things in the family. Let it change right now. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, Lord, we release, we release uh, families today that are in turmoil. Families that, oh Lord, that are regressing from their commitment and their walk with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our young people, oh Lord, that are belonging not just to this church, but Lord, those belonging to you. We pray that you will arrest their lives, that they will live lives that are honoring and glorifying to you, but demonstrative of your power today in our nation. Give us young people that are on fire. Oh Lord, not just filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, but filled with fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we'll live selfless lives, but ready to represent you. To lay their lives down on Calvary. To lay their lives down on, for you, Lord, wherever they go. You said, for we are martyrs. We are witnesses for you. When the Holy Ghost come upon our lives, we pray in the name of Jesus. Give us strength, we ask you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God. Come and somebody need to find the Holy Spirit in your life. Come, you need to believe God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Let there be an open heaven, Lord, upon your people. An open heaven in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lamoroba Shandai. Ah, Yakaboromo Sunday. In the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ah, Yataroma Sandai. Oh, Rabakada Yondo Komosiande. Thank you, Lord. There's so many of us who are wanting to move in the supernatural, and we are the supernatural of God, but we are not prepared to take the steps that are necessary. Being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues is the simplest means by which we can express that supernatural nature in us as God's people. But we, we, some of us are looking for, the, for this mighty thing that God will do. But God says, if you just operate in simple faith, amen, be baptized in my Holy Spirit. He says, speak in other tongues and not once and twice. Speak often, speak all the time. That's an expression of your faith in Him. Amen. And as you, you express that faith, so He will release more and more to you. Amen. Just as it says in the book of, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that says, For by, without faith it is impossible to have anything from God. For he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Prayer in the Holy Spirit enables the, and, and releases faith in God to receive from the hand of the Lord and to know the supernatural. Listen, God has given it to you. It's inside of you. Why not let the Holy Spirit take over? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your time. God bless you.